right, all righty, welcome back. We are now joined by our visitor. He is well equipped and ready to talk to us about youth and politics, everything that is happening here in Kenya, especially that has happened last week and we are still to expect. For this conversation, I am joined by one Kowech Ken, who is the Secretary General of Zitek University of Kenya. Karibu sana, Kowech. Asante sana. Glad to have you with us. Thanks. All right. Uh, you want to tell us what is your mandate first at uh, Zitek University before we get into politics so that people get to know you? Okay, I'm um, Kowech Ken, current Secretary General of Zitek University. I was elected two months ago to serve in that position. Mm -hmm. uh, Secretary General is a position that in charge of communication, you are like the spokesperson of the comrades. Okay. Yeah. So you speak on behalf of the comrades? Yeah. My basically. All right. Two months old into leadership. How is it for you? Mm, experience, somehow, some connection, Kidogo. Yeah. Okay. Iko sawa. Iko sawa. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Now let's get into Kenyan politics. So much has been happening. You know, taking a look at today's paper, we can let's start with that. Raila to renew fight with Ruto. Uh, tag of war, it says. As Mio leader set to hit the streets, hold public barrazas and trigger court action in three pronged onslaught on Kenya. Kwanzaa, and we get the whole story on page four. Let's start with that, Squatch. What do you make of it? Uh, I'm, I'm imagining that this is a call for Mandamano, set co which could begin tomorrow. Yes. What do you think? Mm, I think uh, the Mandamano that is being organized to start from tomorrow is based on mm -hmm. the financial bill 2023 that was passed by our National Assembly. Mm -hmm. I think that will be the main agenda of that Mandamano, most likely, because yes. of the economy issues, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and true to it, they're going to take it to court where they're going to uh, to ask for changes in certain clauses that are there. But for them, before we get even to, to the court matter, for the mandamano about the fin finance uh, about the finance bill, do you think um, it's necessary? Do you think action will be taken, or do you, th you know are people now ready for mandamano both sides of the political divide both that supported uda and both that supported azimio now that uh there's a matter that has cut across all kenyans which is the finance bill and uh, many kenyans have been hurt by it from both sides of political divide so do you think this is actually something that will call for many kenyans to be on the streets tomorrow if it will happen Okay, personally, I think the mandamano will be organized by our opposition leader tomorrow uh, is, n is unnecessary because currently we need everyone on board for us to discuss because we are at a risk, we are at a, almost a coma as a country on matters to the economy. So if we say that we organize a mandamano, we, uh, of late we have seen the mandamano that was organized around one month ago. Mm -hmm. uh, Youths being involved in mandamanos and demonstrations and demolition of infrastructure and, and so forever. So it will definitely it will not bring a solution mm -hmm. to the challenges that affecting the current one mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So um, you're saying it wouldn't be a solution, and the people need to discuss. But someone sitting out there would think. Uh, they give their public opinion about uh, the finance bill, particularly yeah. that. About many other things like the VAT, the many Kenyans also will also be affected by that. So public opinion, they gave, they gave out during uh, the time the committee was sitting. Yeah. And uh, they don't feel like the leaders really represented them because a, a large number of leaders voted yes for the finance, both the finance bill and the VAT. So do you think there's any other way that people can talk about it? This is something that's going to be affected. If, uh, if at all the court case will not, will be dropped. Do you think that people can still discuss about it, Kenyans? Firstly, I think uh, after the public barasas and was concerning the financial bill, for example, housing, it was a 3% tax or what to be dictated for housing. But after the committee sat down and discussed about the same, 
they decided to pay 1.5. Mm -hmm. I think it's some it's, it's which is, it is understandable. Yeah, and mm -hmm. for now I think it's almost uh, the end of July, uh, the end of June, and mm -hmm. financial year for 2023-2024 should start, of which I think it will be late for the government to settle and to organize for another another public process for about, about the same. Okay. Yeah. So you're for yeah. Let it just pass as it is. Yeah. The way it is. And you move on. Do, do you think, do you not think or that you will be affected as a Kenyan with the increase in taxes from 8% to 6% which will, on VAT, on fuel, so that will increase prices across the board. Don't you think that will affect you as a, as a Kenyan? I think uh, concerning from, is it from 8 to 16? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, the, the president was clear on matters to do with some, I think some VAT was uh, removed completely on some commodities. Mm -hmm. I think it was food or what? And mm -hmm. it was started on fuel and what? I think some of it was balanced, but we'll have to bear with it for a period of time as to say by Mr. President. Okay. Yeah. So uh, still on that part, before we move on from it, um, on page four, still on Azimio, it says, talk, talking about the court case, so Azimio legislators, we have Anthony Oluoch, MP Mazare, we have Otiende Amolo, MP Rarieda, and uh, Daniel Manzo, who's Makweni senator, have already been enjoined in the case filed by uh, Busia Senator Okeo Tata against the finance bill. So this is a case that is already in court, so we, it can't really pass even if the president consents it until the court uh, case has been heard. And um, in the petition, Omtata and seven others argue that the bill is a threat to human dignity and social economic rights. So how do you see this panning out from your point of view, Ken? How do you see this panning out? You see that the court, you know, we don't want to preempt what the court will do, but how do you see this thing panning out? Mm, concerning the court issues, I think Kenya is a democratic Republic, mm -hmm. and I accept the procedural that, the, that it has been that it has been taken by the minority side, mm -hmm. uh, by the Okiom Tata and minority leader, mm. Mm -hmm. concerning the same. So if that's the channel they have taken, it's important concerning interest mm -hmm. of Kenyan than going to streets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is a better solution. It's a better so solution. Okay. Yeah. So uh, what about the Kamukonji rally that is going to take place tomorrow, according to what um, the minority leader is saying? Uh, saying tomorrow's meeting at Kamukonji is beginning of is the beginning of a conversation with Kenyans, according to Azimio leadership and Azimio. Th this is not something that will really uh, is geared to, towards causing. Uh, disturbance to the nation or get towards causing violence. They are calling it a talk, a conversation with the Kenyans. They want to hear from Kenyans. What do you think about it? I think if it's a conversation between them and Kenyans about mm. uh, the same financial bill, I think it's right. As long as they don't do any mm -hmm. demolition or destruction of infrastructure of the country. Mm -hmm. And I will also give my advice that uh, mm -hmm. they go the minority, uh, as by the minority leader, Opio and I route of going to the court procedure earlier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. Now, changing gears a little bit, uh, something that has not been captured in this paper, or at least I've not seen it yet. Um, what was going on last week? The CS trade, uh, Moses Korea was, you know, had a, an exchange, not really an exchange, but he had some vulgar words to exchange with the media. And uh, he was really against the media. And we have seen that um, the DP coming on board and he said, sort of backing him up, not in entirety, because him and the president say that the media have their freedom. So, but still, the, according to the, what the president said yesterday, is that as much as the media has the freedom, uh, the CS, that if he was alluding to the CS, he also has his freedom of speech. So this coming from the government 
you know, causing mixed reactions with the people because the people, most people at least, expected that the government will come and condemn what the CS did, you know, what the CS said to the media because he also went to his Twitter page and talked negatively, ab using abusive language towards the media. So what do you, what do you make of it? Mm, concerning the same about Moses Korea, I think Mr. Uh, Mr. Trade Affairs, isn't it? Mm, it's trade, uh, yeah. I think it's it portrayed a bad picture to the country for mm -hmm. him first holding a public office and making such utterances to a media that is mm -hmm. uh, democratic, democratically recognized and is, it has been championed in Kenyan affairs since independence. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I think after his speech and after the court order, he went ahead and called the media or what prostitutes, like something like that in their uh, Kikuyu language, mm -hmm. if I'm not wrong. I think it was being analyzed by CCM TV. Or, uh -huh. or, yeah. I think it's not that it portrays a bad picture to, to the public. Yeah. Okay. And it was also mentioned that the media will soon fade. You know, this is also coming from the government, um, just trying to, you know, uh, sort of, okay, it, it was, that was some sort of what was said that the media will, will soon fade. Do you think that the media now has the freedom that it should have compared to where it has come from during the regime of the late president, uh, Daniel Mui, till where we are now? Are we going back to how it was or are we really given the freedom that the media needs? I think we are not going back since uh, we are being given room to strengthen and to be fair mm -hmm. as by me, uh, by media. Because uh, I think mm -hmm. if the president is saying fairness, it's because I think the president was in France the other day. And mm -hmm. if you compare the means that, uh, for example, sits in uh, TV are discussing affairs concerning royal media, they are discussing affairs concerning mm -hmm. uh, how bad the financial bill is, um, and the man also they are organized and the minister being given to the Mr. President mm -hmm. when he was uh, discussing issues concerning Africa as a continent and Kenya affairs. Mm -hmm. He was given at least a, a minute, yet he was discussing very important issues. That's why Mr. President is insisting being on fairness. Okay, so you were saying, sorry, um, I'd want you to come back on that. Who was given one minute compared to the others? I think Mr. President was given a minute when we were discussing uh, affairs concerning Africans and Kenya in France. Mm -hmm. It was yesterday or the other day, the other day. In France? Yeah. Okay. When but it was being aired in Citizen News, it was around 9 or 7 news, 7 p.m. news. Okay, so the media is not giving yeah. uh, to, enough airtime for to, important issues yeah. and only airing. Do, do, you, do you think that's the case from where you're standing? Do you, according to how you watch the media, is that the, the picture that it portrays? Is that the news that is given? Or do you think the media gives Kenyans what they actually need to know? Uh, this is referring to the scandal that uh, was exposed by uh, NTV. Yeah. You know, a docket uh, that is he uh, headed by the CS trade, Bosses Korea, on, on matters oil, which has, hasn't really been talked on by the government, They're, they haven't really given a reply to it. Do you think that it has that, those matters or matters that the government wants to see? I think there's no problem uh, when the media recognizes some scandals and expose it. Mm -hmm. I think that is what Kenyans want to know. Since Kenyans uh, are concerned about where the, the tax that they are being caused to and mm -hmm. what they play. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And also the government want to show to the Kenyans that we have done this and this. So also media channel this information that Mr. President has done this today, Mr. Deputy President has done this today, our cabinet, uh, prime cabinet has done this today. So they are the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So now back to what the president said, quoting um, his words. He said, we must defend the media, the free media. We must... Uh, defend the right to criticize, to say wha whatever they want to say, even to write pro propaganda, even to say the wrong things, we must defend that right. We must also defend the right of those who hold the media to account. Yeah. 
When the media goes rogue, we must also defend the rights of people like Moses Kuria to speak their mind the same way we are defending the media to all the things they want to say, including the wrong ones. So this was the statement by the president. And there's something that I heard some time ago, last week I think, it was talking about freedom. So it was saying, my freedom ends where yours begins. This was said by one Grace Gedaiga. My freedom ends where yours yes. begins. So what the president is saying is that the media has its freedom and Moses Korea also has its freedom. But where does the freedom of someone like Moses Korea end? Does it end where the media freedom begins? I don't know if it makes sense to you. How far can he go with his freedom of speech at least? Mm, I think uh, Moses Korea should not misuse the power Mm -hmm. that is enjoying now since he's the cabinet minister. I think it should be the same, the power, uh, the freedoms that he's enjoying is the freedom of, uh, is the same freedom that all Kenyans are enjoying of freedom of communication. Mm -hmm. But he should limit his words mm -hmm. uh, that is portrayed with him uh, with the office that he occupy. Okay, yeah. so he, he has the freedom but he needs to know where to, to limit. Yeah. His words, and I think that's agreeing basically to the statement. So it's freedom ends where the other begins. So he needs to know his limits, yeah. basically, as we all do. Okay, amazing. So now uh, there's this other thing that I also want us to highlight. Uh, there's the world media, and then now the new taxes. What should uh, Kenyans expect if everything goes through? If uh, you know it, the, it's not stopped uh, in court. What should Kenyans expect from July 1st? I think July 1st, uh, I think new media people had some interview with Mr. President. Mm -hmm. And Mr. President promised some good news to Kenyans uh, mm -hmm. if the financial bill 2023 passed through our National Assembly. Mm -hmm. And he said first, uh, it will be a price of 300 to 500 if the financial bill 2023 pass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think some, that's a, some of some goodies that may come out through the pass of financial bill 2023. Okay, yeah. so that is one of them. But we've seen the president come coming and giving promises to Kenyans. And Kenyans are very quick to go back to those videos and show them you said this, but you haven't really responded to it. So how sure are we? that the president is going to actually keep to his words, to his promises. And the other day, uh, we, f we saw, it was it yesterday, we saw the Prime Cabinet Secretary, Musale Mudavadi, coming on to say that six months won't be enough. We need two years. So, and Kenyans, some of the Kenyans commented on it and saying, at least now, we are having some truth, you know, that makes sense. Other than the, the promises that have been given so far, you know, short term or, you know, that, you know, the president gave them as if they are going to be achieved on short term, but they haven't been achieved. So are we seeing uh, another story where we also, we're also likely to be told to wait longer? I think uh, concerning, for example, housing, housing, you can, it's not a short term thing. It's a long term thing. And that's what Mr. President has been promising. Uh, on uh, on gas uh, cylinders, I think, mm -hmm. I think something that it can happen since I think Mr. President launched uh, a gas company in Mombasa or what mm -hmm. the other day, and I think th it's it's some it sounds uh, it can happen mm -hmm. if this financial bill go through and if Mr. President has sent it to into into use. Okay. Yeah. So you believe that we're going to have everything? Yeah, I believe. All right, so, so finally, um, on this issue that is going to happen today at the Senate, so the Senate is going to have a special sitting today regarding the impeachment of the Deputy Governor of Siaya County. Um, what do you make of it? Oh, the yeah, that's the Deputy uh, Governor of Siaya County, William O'Doll, who was impeached by Siaya County Assembly after 42 members of uh, the county assembly unanimously adopted the report of the special committee to impeach him. So, what what do you what, what do you think that is likely to happen today, judging from 
previous sittings that the Senate has had to sit on matters of impeachment. Mm -hmm. Concerning how I, uh, I saw the issue of impeachment motion of the Deputy Governor of CIA, mm -hmm. I think somehow if those uh, issues that were presented concerning, for example, I think it was trending mostly in our social media, uh, a chair, it was a chair, yeah, costing a one million Kenya shilling. Mm -hmm. And somehow if it's real that it was purchased with one million shilling, mm, I think Senate should do a favor to Kenyans and mm -hmm. mostly people, uh, most likely uh, CIA people. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's just a form of corruption that's obvious because no one can purchase a seat of one million, mm -hmm. of which even if it's a one million seat, I think the one that we saw on our screens uh, or it was being showcased in, in Senate, I think it, it doesn't match a one million seat here. Okay. And I think for me, I, I support that Senate to, uh, to do a favor to Kenyans. And, and Muslim, in, yeah. impeach, yeah, impeach. impeach the deputy governor. But we have not seen this um, happening. Is it something that is likely to happen as much as you're saying that? Because uh, the previous case with um, Governor Kawera Mungaza, it was people... Were, you know, it was highly likely that she was going to be, uh, the Senate was going to allow the impeachment, but it didn't happen. We do have many cases where the Senate has approved an impeachment, and I'm not, I'm not talking, you know, uh, trying to preempt what is going to happen, but do you think that it's something that's most likely going to happen, that they're going to approve it? So I think, mm -hmm. I think you are wrong first. Senate has approved some impeachment motions, like uh -huh. one uh, Mike Mbuvisongo when he was in Nairobi governor. Mm -hmm. I, went, I think he went through the same and he was impeached. Okay. Yeah. So you, you, okay, you're countering that, saying that they have actually had Im yeah. approved so impeachment. I think, mm -hmm. I think uh, they should do the same to CIA deputy governor because it portrays some form of corruption. Mm -hmm. Because of purchasing a one million seat doesn't make sense. All right. Yeah. Does it make sense for you? Uh, what about uh, Sayre County? They're also on the story, they're saying that it, uh, the deputy governor has spoiled, sort of spoiled the name for the governor himself and some of the MCAs. Do you, do you agree with this? Mm, I think it's said that mm -hmm. So <laughs> I think uh, for deputy governor, he hasn't spoiled the name of the governor or the fellow MCS because mm -hmm. he's entitled to his office, mm -hmm. uh, his budget and everything. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I wanted to conclude that, but I want you to also touch on the counties a little bit. Um, just on the front page, 250 million city bus park to be flattened. Um, governor Sakaja says plan to use facility as heavy vehicle holding ground has failed. So this is a project by NMS, yeah. and uh, $250 million, that's a lot of money. For it to be flattened, it'll mean the taxpayer's money has just gone on a loss, just like that. Mm. What, do you, what do you make of it? Is it a good move? My opinion is that, it's firstly, it's not a good move, mm -hmm. since we are going to waste a lot of money. That's around $250 million. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, we have not uh, take measures to ensure that the same infrastructure is being used by the purpose that was meant to. Mm -hmm. Because we have not seen the county officials instructing the matatus and vehicles from the west, western Kenya to use the, mm -hmm. the station. For, I think it was considered to be a stage for... Um, They've actually... Um Okay, so basically, um, let, let me explain what it was for. Sakata said that despite the former regime having an ambitious plan to make the center a holding ground for long-distance vehicles, as you've said, yeah. um, 
the plan have failed and the land ought to be used for another purpose. And the purpose that he wants it to be used for is to have a world-class conference center there. And he says he has already investors who have expressed interest to have the place converted yeah, into the world-class conference center. So it, is that a better use for, for this? place where the NMS had as a holding ground for the long distance vehicles to a uh, world-class conference center? Mm, I think world-class conference center, I think at first we have KICC. Mm -hmm. And secondly, if we are going to destroy it, we are destroying 250 million. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we have, after construction, there was no measures that was put on place yeah, like to ensure saying. that uh, long distance vehicles mm -hmm. from Western Kenya occupy the place after their journey. Mm -hmm. So my advice to the governor and the county officials, firstly to try out if it can work out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it can still work out. We, he needs to look into it yeah. better and more pressure. And to have you know probably a committee that can try and help him see how to strategize and really implement it. Yeah, about the same. Uh, okay. All right. What about the other counties? We are really seeing a lot of Nairobi County and uh, the governors coming on to speak on different things and uh, different projects. I always think the same with other counties. Is the co county government really doing, I think, working, really? I think the devolution is working mm -hmm. because yesterday Mr. President confirmed to the country and to the counties that uh, we already paid all the money that was being needed by the county governments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think now all these projects that being uh, implemented by the Sakaja administration, I think it's working because I think mm -hmm. Nairobi was mentioned to be one of the counties that receiving majority of the money. Okay. Yeah. Uh, speaking still on uh, the governor of Nairobi, there's this project that he, uh, he implemented or he talked about last week about giving free lunch to uh, uh, public primary schools. Yeah. Yeah, wh what do you think of that? Is that a good move? I think it's a good move. Mm -hmm. Because I think it was being launched by Mr. President. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it's a good move because not majority Kenyans are receiving the, the majority of the, our, our students, our people going to the uh, early childhood education mm -hmm. are receiving a, a food that is required, maybe a palace meal. I think it's a good progress because mm -hmm. not majority of our parents are giving these, these pupils the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, there's this particular story it's still on matters how county uh, government is operating. Um, it's, it was actually on Twitter, not news. And I'm trying to get it. I'm not sure if I'll get it. Maybe I will not. Mm -hmm. It was a church that was being launched. Um, what county was it? I am forgetting. Um, hmm. Let me get it just in a few. But basically, what was happening is that uh, a governor was supporting a church to be launched. Um, and he was asking, what about supporting some of the development projects like they supported you know the dev you know the building of the church like that it's actually here i've gotten it um so it was kipchumba murkomen and he tweeted we are currently in kapsoa for the official opening and dedication of aic kapsoa township church sanctuary so uh a vlogger wrote uh, it looks amazing commented but he was wondering, why are we unable to deploy the same social capital for development projects? If a rural hamlet can do this, why, don't, why do we need capacity building for ECDs and dispensaries? Do you think that you know, think this can be channeled to ECDs? Such, you know, such efforts can also be channeled to where they really matter, not that the chat doesn't, but you know, dispensaries, these are necessities. Do you, do you think, do you share the same opinion or a different sentiment? Mm, I think first, uh, mm, ECDs are being funded by, or being constructed by the county governments. Mm. And I think those are being 
those are money that comes from the taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. uh, constructing, constructing a church, uh, it's, it was a fundraise. And I think mm -hmm. those, uh, mm, what do I call them? Well, wishes came with their personal money from their pockets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, can we declare the same thing? You know, people just coming together, if it's not working with the government, can people come together, social capital, raise that capital and improve on some amenities like hospi dispensaries, hospitals? Do you think it's necessary? It's not necessary, but if it's important, mm -hmm. it can work. It can work, yeah. but it's actually um, a mandate of the county, county government, to yeah. do it. All right, what do you have to say as we come to a close on this regarding politics and everything that we have discussed? Mm, firstly, what I can say is that mm, as a country, mm -hmm. somehow we are being seen outside Kenya, like mm, we are somehow our politics is maturing mm -hmm. because after the elections, that was 2022 August elections, we had a peaceful transition and the country ran through after six months that we are being told by the opposition that open service and what and what. Something that look weird. Mm, secondly, mm -hmm. I think concerning affairs to do with youth politics, I think youth should be also bring with the negotiation table mm -hmm. so that they can discuss their issues and how it's affect them. Because we are in during campaigns you are being informed majority of stories, so to pick a cura will to the Tia Kura, to the Tia Tia Kasi. But after the elections, we are being told that in our graduation, like the other day on Friday, mm -hmm. we had our deputy president attending a uh, you know, graduation ceremony in Jaguar. And he's being, uh, we were telling uh, graduates of medicine and engineers and what and what that. Yeah. Kasi no gomjengo sai. So I was wondering, how does medicine student, yeah, it, it doesn't relate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also I think concerning youth affairs, what I can say is that Mr. President should consider giving a position like cabinet secretary, youth affairs to be a youth, mm -hmm. not uh, someone who is not a category of 18 to 35. Mm -hmm. Because if you weigh a Pabuna Mwamba is not in that category of 18 to 35. Mm -hmm. You know nothing about youths. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So we, you're saying we need a youth on that, yeah. in that position. Yeah. Do you think a youth will be able to handle that role? Will be able to take on that sort of, you know, um, whatever is required? I think what does it mean by a youth affairs? Mm -hmm. Things that concern with a youth. Because you cannot pick someone from nowhere and you tell uh, who is not a youth, doesn't know nothing about the welfare of the youths, doesn't mm -hmm. know what youths run their affairs, and you tell them control the youths, it, it doesn't make sense. You can't work out You like must that. have someone that knows how the language of youth, that sharing that's being used commonly, that's, uh, who is concerned with how, what the, the youths like, mostly, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. What do you think? You, you mentioned the deputy president and what he said about Kazem Jengo. He also said that He's also, there are no employment in Kenya. Ni wanangoja sisi tutafteza employment. What is your position on that? How can we create employment for ourselves if that is the, is the state that we are in as youths? I think firstly, mm, the deputy president was, was supposed to be telling Kenyans mm -hmm. during campaigns that there is no employment. Mm. Then telling the youth that after our win. There's no employment. We, yeah. It does make, it somehow, it looks like our politics also is full of lies and propagandas. Yeah. Yeah. So we just tell the truth how it is. Mm -hmm. Then saying a lot of stories in, during campaigns and after you have been elected into office, you change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And what's your position in, on that? If that's the current state we're in, if the deputy president says we don't have work, and we are the ones to create that employment for ourselves, then how, how do you suggest we, as you step up on that? Mm, concerning the same, I think the youths, what a bit of a jitu, 
doing, I think, for example, a student like who is doing, for example, law, she will join these law firms, yeah. Mm -hmm. For example, a student doing medicine and so ever, she'll form at least, if you have a little fund, you can form your clinic and you start your, you run your own business for the mm -hmm. time being. Yeah. Okay, so it's to Jituma, as to you to need to, to Jituma out there. Yeah. All right, uh, Ken, where can people get you on your socials if they want to interact with you? They come in Raya Kohapa. Social media on Facebook, mm -hmm. you'll get me at Onerepo Ken Koech. Uh, Twitter, you look at me at Coach Ken Senior. Mm, Instagram, I'm not ins Instagram. Yeah, I think those are only mm -hmm. some platforms. I mean, you've you've mentioned honourable, and I've just remembered a piece in this paper where uh, a governor who has not been who has refused to be mentioned is actually suing a newspaper for calling him honorable <laughs> multiple times <laughs> it's actually very funny because he you know the 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 title um demands that you're carried with some sort of respect yeah. or decorum whatever you say and everything but that's not how he uh sees himself so he's suing the newspaper for it very a very funny uh sentiments to have anyway thank you for joining us that has been our honorable coach ken as you said he's the secretary general of zitec university of kenya we've been talking politics youth and politics i hope you have taken something from it enjoyed it or something brand circle will be coming up next with a very interesting conversation on mcm you definitely want to be a part of that the hashtag to use is one in the morning at y254 channel my personal handle is at stephanie ayeta we take a short break we'll be right back <laughs>